Hey guys, good evening here in the UK. So it's nice to see you again. Uh, I've got some time tonight to do another vlog. I thought about answering some questions, like common questions I get to, to be asked in my YouTube regarding the process of the NMC. Um, some of the questions are actually just the same. So I thought about, you know, just making a video about it so that other people can see it and might help them in the process of their papers for the NMC registration. So the main reason actually is because I'm quite busy right now with work and my part-time job as an IELTS coach. Um, I, so I thought about just answering all the main questions related to the NMC registration because you know it takes like a week or so for me to sometimes reply to the comments and uh, I really do appreciate your patience and um, I apologize if I haven't been able to reply either in YouTube or when you personally message me because you know I have other commitments that I need to do so hopefully this video is going to help a lot of you guys I hope you do watch till the end because um, you might find questions that might be applicable for you and that might be very beneficial for you so let's get started okay so I'll be reading each comments that I got which I think is going to be important I'm just going to translate in English if the question is asked in Tagalog, okay? So everybody can understand it. Um, the first question is, Hi Ms. K, my PRC ID, which is the license, my PRC ID or license is expired. I've already renewed online. However, I am not able to get it because I am currently in Saudi and I couldn't go home because my flight is always being canceled. Is there an alternative um, ID for me to upload in the NMC registration to prove that I am registered in the Philippines? The answer is yes. If you don't have the PRC ID, as far as I know, you can definitely upload a copy of your LUPON or registration certificate. I think you can do so because I've read from other comments as well and Facebook groups that some of them are not able to upload their PRC ID or some of them are not able to upload their registration certificate because they haven't received it. So either or you can upload the PRC ID or the registration certificate. However, I would advise that maybe it would be better if you're going to upload your PRC ID because it's the ID we're in. It's going to show the validity of your registration as a nurse. In the LUPON, there is no expiration date, whereas in the PRC ID, there is. So it's going to be a strong proof that you are currently registered and that you have a valid license in the Philippines. So one thing that you could do is even if you're abroad, you can definitely process the renewal of your license because it's being done online. I did renew my license last January 2021. So that was just three months ago. I did everything online. I paid online and uh, the ID was sent to my doorstep. Um, you know, NMC wouldn't need the physical ID. They just need you to scan and uh, upload the main ID. It should be clear, of course. And, you know, even if you're abroad, you can ask your relative or somebody else to take a photo of it and then you can proceed in your NMC registration. Please provide person contact detail who can translate PCC or police clearance of KSA. Thank you in advance. Um, I've pinned this comment already so that everybody could see it once they read the comments, if you do read the comments. But yeah, I'm going to put the person, I'm going to put the person that I contacted to translate my police clearance from Saudi and um, hopefully she can help you. But I mean, I don't know her personally, it's just that she was also referred to me and I had a good experience when I, have my, when I had my police clearance translated. So, you know, you can send her a message. Hello ma'am, can I take the CBT even without IELTS or OED? Thank you and God bless. Yes, definitely, you can take the CBT exam without taking the IELTS or the OED because the IELTS or the OET is going to be asked from you on the second step of the registration 
Um, however, I would highly suggest that you do take your IELTS or OET first because the English test is so much harder compared to the CBT exam. Um, but I'm not sure because, you know, CBT is going to change the format in August 2021 this year. I'm not sure how hard it's going to be, but you still have a lot of time, you know, to prepare for your English test. So I would definitely advise you to process that first before you take your CBT. Thank you so much for this. Please, I want to verify if I can use the exit stamp on my passport instead of police clearance. Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me about this as well. Some of them mostly are from the Middle East. Like they worked in the Middle East, they were not able to get the police clearance, and now they're processing their NMC registration, and they don't have a police clearance to upload for their registration. Um, as an alternative, you can definitely upload your exit stamp and exit visa. You just need to make sure that it's in English or it's translated in English, and NMC will accept it. So yeah, if in case you lost your passport already and you don't have a copy of your exit stamp or visa, then I believe you can request for a police clearance from Saudi Arabia. I am just not sure on how you can process it, but um, for sure you can you know, Google it or it's better to always join in Facebook group. Um, there is the Filipino UK nurses group. There is the Saudi to UK nurses. Um, there is also the NMC news system group. So you can join those groups in Facebook. You can search for um, related questions and um, yeah, hopefully you can, you know, request for one. Do I need to secure a certificate of good standing from PRC in step two? Okay, I made a vlog regarding this certificate of good standing or COGS as what we call. Um, to be honest, I wasn't able to use that in my NMC registration either in step one or in step two. The only reason why I requested for it is because I've been reading messages in Facebook groups that some of the nurses have requested for it. Until right now, I'm not sure where to use it, but you know, it's just gonna cost you 75 pesos, so why not just get it? It might be useful for you in the future, not in M NMC registration, but you know, when you apply for your future employer. So I think it would be a good thing for you to get one. Hi Miss K, can I register for NMC if I don't have my registration certificate or lupon yet or to follow na lang ng upload? Would I would it proceed till the end of application? Or, okay, I think I answered this earlier. So in step one registration, I would advise that you watch the vlog that I made for the step one registration. Um, you have to have a proof that you are registered in the country in where you were born, or it could be, you know, where you initially registered yourself. Um, I have some people asking me that they are born in the Philippines, studied in the Philippines, but they didn't get a license from the Philippines. They initially got their license in the US. So of course, you have to upload the license where you initially got it. So in that case, um, that person needs to upload the registration that he made in the US, right? Um, so. If you need a proof, then you definitely have to provide your registration certificate. But again, as an alternative, you can upload your PRC ID as long as it's valid. Valid meaning it is not expired. If it is expired, then you can renew it first before uploading it in the NMC registration because they're not going to accept your PRC ID if it's already expired. Now, if it is near expiry, that is still valid, so you can still process your NMC registration. And once you got your new license or renewed license, then you can submit your new license to the NMC email and uh, let them update your information. Ate, I have a problem. I registered myself as a nurse associate to NMC, but I'm a nurse. I need to change my registration from nurse associate to nurse, but I don't know how to do it. I hope you can help me. Okay, there are a lot of people doing the same mistakes as well. So what you need to do is to send an email to NMC, tell them that you made that mistake and you wanted to change your registration 
from being a nursing associate to being a registered nurse. You can't do it manually or you can't edit your profile in the NMC registration. You need to send an email or either call them. Yeah, I think what's going to happen is they're going to cancel your nursing associate account. They're going to refund you the money that you paid for. And then you will have to do the same steps again, like register yourself as a registered nurse. Nurse Gay, is there any need of PCC translation hard copy anytime? Please suggest. Okay, yes, definitely. You have to have a hard copy of your police clearance because you're going to use this when you finally do your OSCE. So in the NMC registration, everything is online. You don't need to send your physical documents to the NMC. You just need to scan and upload it to their system. However, when you finally take your OSCE exam, you would have to bring all your original documents in hard copy, of course. Um, what are those documents? Those are the documents that you have uploaded in the NMC registration. So hard copy is important. Hi, is it mandatory to have original of OET and CBT or download from concern site is enough a soft copy? Okay. Um, I am not sure for OET how do you get a copy of your result, but for IELTS, because I took IELTS, IELTS um, gave us the result by giving us the TRF or I forgot the, what it's called, but it's a form, like it's in one piece of paper. So the result is there. And yes, you definitely have to have a hard copy of that because again, you're going to show it to your OSCE examiner once you do your OSCE. Regarding the CBT, they do not send an email or a hard copy for the result. So what you need to do is to open up your Pearson View account, print it from there. That would be enough as a hard copy that you passed your CBT. Is it okay that I submitted my old passport in my NMC registration? We already renewed my passport, but I sent the old one. Isn't that going to conflict with my application when I finally reach the UK? Okay, so any updates that you need to do regarding your documents, you have to inform the NMC. Um, whether it's a change in your name, whether it's a change in your passport's validity, change in your registration license validity. So you always have to update the NMC and uh, you can do this by sending them an email. Hey ma'am, I just need to ask because my license is going to expire on September. Is it okay to use my old license for my registration? Because it will take time for my new license to come. Any advice, ma'am? Okay, again, I've answered this question already. If your PRC ID or license is still valid, then yes, you can continue with your application. However, once you changed it or renewed it, then you have to inform the NMC via email. Hello, Nurse K. Regarding my PRC verification, is it okay to do walk-in? And um, is it okay to authorize another person to process my verification? Okay, I'm not quite sure what do you mean by PRC verification. But if you are talking about the SBV or the State Board verification, um, as far as I know, yes, it should be walk-in, but I'm not sure, maybe it depends on the branch of the PRC, especially right now that the COVID cases are increasing in the Philippines, so there might be some changes with the scheduling. What you can do is you can check your PRC branch online and see what are the rules or schedule that they have set in there. But in my experience, when I did my SBV last year, that was in... October 2020, I did walk in because there was no option for you to set up an appointment online. Regarding your other question, is it okay for other person to process the SBV for you? Definitely, it is. I talked about this in my other vlog about the SBV. All the information is there. I hope you can watch that so you would know what are the requirements or the papers that you need to provide in order for another person to process the SBV for you. Hello, I started my step one registration last February 11 and I only knew from you that I needed to go to PRC for validation. 
Do I need to ask NMC to send a verification request again since a week has already passed? Thanks. Okay, I don't think you would need to do that because once the NMC sent the email already, then it's just going to sit in the PRC email address. So all they need to do as far as I know is to search for your name or your CRM number, whichever is easier, and they would definitely find the link that the NMC sent. I'm not really sure, I'm just assuming because um, basically it's just about NMC sending an email. If you haven't verified your um, state board, then of course, I don't think they're going to delete the email from the NMC, right? What you can do is to go directly to the PRC, find out if they could verify your state board. It wouldn't take a lot of minutes for you to do that. If in case they say that the NMC hasn't sent a link to them, or if they say that they did not receive a link, which happens all the time, then that's the time that you will need to contact NMC to resend the link to PRC. Okay, there are a lot of questions here. Hi Nurse Kay, thanks for this very informative video. I just have a few questions or clarifications. First question is, the registration certificate from PRC and the marriage certificate, does it have to be latest? I already have one here, but should I request another copy so it will be the latest? Okay, let's talk about the registration certificate first. The registration certificate doesn't have a validity. Once they give you the registration certificate or the lupon, it's going to be valid forever. If you're going to check the certificate, you won't see any date in there. You're just going to see the date where it was awarded to you, but you're not going to see an expiration date. The PRC license is, is the one that you need to update because that's the one with the validity date. For the marriage certificate, it's the same thing. There is no validity for the marriage certificate, but what you need to know is that the authority who is providing the marriage certificate or the, the birth certificate already changed from NSO to PSA. So whatever marriage certificate that you have, it has to be from PSA because you know NMC might not accept it if it's coming from NSO which is the old name of the authority. Second question regarding passport and PRC license ID. Should I scan them, have it printed, then need, does it need to be author, not notarized? Okay, this is a very common question that I get. Again, with the NMC registration, everything is online. So it would be enough if you're going to scan your certificate or your documents in colored, of course. It should be legible. It should be clear and you don't have to notarize it. Just scan it in colored and upload it in your NMC registration. That would be enough for you as a proof that um, you're, you, you're really registered or you really graduated from this school. Anyway, they are going to verify it. They're going to call your school. They're going to contact the, the regulator and they will find out for sure if it's fake or not. Hi. Do they need the license from other country? For example, I worked in Kuwait. I do have a license there. Do I still need to upload that? Okay, there are a lot of nurses who's been all around the world. For example, me, I worked in Saudi Arabia before coming here in the UK. I also worked in the Philippines. So do I need to upload all my licenses from different countries? The answer is no. Um, personally, what I did based on my experience is I uploaded my registration or my license from the Philippines. I did not upload my license from Saudi Arabia. Um, the reason is because it takes a while for Saudi to verify that I am that I was registered there. So if you don't want to delay your application, then I would suggest not do it. However, if you are currently working in the Middle East, you might want to consider uploading your license from there. For example, you worked in the Philippines and you are currently working in the Middle East, then you might want to consider uploading both licenses. But I know some other people who did not upload their licenses from other countries, even if they are currently working there. So again, they just uploaded the license where they initially got it, which is the Philippines. 
So yeah, I think your application would still progress. Can PCL nurses apply? So this is one of the questions that's a bit strange for me because I'm not familiar with the PCL, but I research about it and it says here PCL nursing is a proficiency certificate level. I think this is common in India, if I'm not mistaken. Um, You know what, I'm sorry, but I'm not really sure on how to answer this, although I think I've answered this already in my in the comments. As far as I know, um, the NMC would accept bachelor's degree in nursing, and uh, you should have um, an English test that's accepted, which is either IELTS or OET. So I hope that covers that question. Hello ma'am, good morning. I just wanted to ask how to process expired CBT. My CBT will expire on May 16 and I am planning to retake. Thank you. May God bless you more. Okay, okay regarding the near expired CBT, I saw a link in the NMC. Um, okay, if your CBT is going to expire soon, you don't need to worry about that because it's going to be extended. I believe for six more months. I'm just not really sure, but I'll try to put in the link for you to find out more about it, okay? So before you plan to take your CBT again, I would advise that you visit the NMC website and search about it because who knows, it might be extended up to six months, right? For the register account part, country of residence, should I put Philippines or the country where I'm currently working right now? I'm currently in UAE. I'm a bit confused. Hope you can clarify. Thank you. Okay, regarding the country of residence, um, I think it wouldn't really matter, you know, uh, because I know a lot of people who are currently working in the Middle East, for example, but their original residence is in the Philippines. So they put in the Philippines as their address. Some people, they put in the place where they are currently residing. So I don't think it really matters. I, I, I think it's just an information that that's basic that the NMC wanted to know. So, Hi Ms. K, may I know what's your agency? Okay, this was mentioned from a previous blog. My agency is Profco of Professional Connections and their partner agency in the Philippines is ABBA. The main role of ABBA is to just process the POEA papers because the Profco cannot do that since they are based in Ireland. There you have it. So I think those are the most commonly asked questions regarding the NMC registration. I do hope this is really going to help a lot of people because again, I don't have the luxury of time to answer all of the comments. Um, I'm trying actually because I really wanted to help, but um, because I'm restricted with the time, then I couldn't really answer everything. Hopefully I can do more vlog about more questions that I'm receiving. And uh, as always, if you have more questions, you can just leave a comment or better to personally message me through my Instagram and Facebook account. And uh, whenever I have the time, then um, I'm going to answer it. So I think that would be all for tonight. You have a great night there, a great day. And uh, if you have any suggested content that you want me to do on my blog, then you can do so. Just leave me a message and uh, I'll try to get time for it. Bye.